<sighs> hello, 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 hello. Let me turn this up or turn this on rather. Let me get on here. All right. Welcome, welcome everyone. How are you all doing today? So excited, so excited. Ah, today's a good day. God is a good, good, good God. And I'm so excited to be here tonight. I'm so excited to share with you guys tonight. Um, as we continue our series, you know, sometimes in life, you go through these difficult seasons in your life um, that, you know, takes you in a different direction than you had envisioned for your life. And I, I just have to say that God is so faithful. God has always, always, always been so very faithful to me and has blessed me in so many ways. And I'm so thankful and so grateful even tonight as we get into our conversation. Um, me just coming here since October, I've been coming on here on Mondays. I missed one Monday and I was that was two Mondays ago. Um, I missed it because I was away um, um, with my in Jamaica with my sister as she was getting married. But I've been here every Monday and been faithful. And in my faithfulness, I have definitely seen God bless me. And I know there are many people that listen. Some of them all don't listen while I'm talking. But I, when I go back and I look at the analytics, I see a lot of people um, have had the opportunity to come and listen because what I'm sharing is beneficial in so many ways. You know, for the, um, 13 years, well, no, no, no. Um, how long have I been doing therapy? Um, Jesus, I can't remember now. Um, since 2009, um, when I started South Bay, um, 2009, since 2009, I have been doing counseling and been serving people in this um, manner um, and even had the privilege to have my own practice, two practices, the Wholeness Center and the Healing Institute. Um, and it's just been a wonderful blessing to be able to minister, to share, to talk, to encourage people. And so clients are paying me good money for the information that I'm giving you. And so it's coming from in a teaching format and not the same um, format as it is with I'm, when I'm sitting with the client, but these are important information to help build and strengthen the family. And so um, we welcome again. We are streaming from a couple of different um, sites tonight. We are streaming from first and for, first and foremost um, on Facebook here, um, my personal Facebook page, the ministry's Facebook page. We're streaming also from YouTube and Clubhouse. So I am excited. Let's start with our commercial so we can get into our conversation because we're going to be talking about some serious and important things today. Eastern time, then it must be time for love. It's Monday. It's 7 p.m. Eastern time. Then it must be time for Life Waves, where therapy meets faith, empowering you to the place where your spirit always knew you were destined for. In here, we make therapy practical. Join us on Facebook at Sandra Garçon or Sandra Garçon Digerville, YouTube at Sandra Garçon Digerville, and now on Clubhouse. So come in, like, subscribe, ping, share. We have much to talk about. So let's get into our conversation tonight. Um, so tonight we are talking about communication styles. And it is really so important for us to understand our different communication styles. So there's multiple communication styles that we're going to be addressing. Um, assertiveness, aggressive, passive aggressive, 
submissive, manipulative. And so we're going to look at these um, behave, um, communication styles. It is important to know how, um, what your communication style is, because sometimes um, with communication, the importance of communication is being able to transfer information, to give information, to receive information. And so when we are, um, when we have a certain communication style, the way information, sorry, <clears throat> Hi, Eugene. Welcome, welcome on Clubhouse. Um, thank you for um, hopping on. So we're talking tonight on communication styles. So here on LifeWays, with, um, I'm a therapist, and I've been a therapist for about um, 11 years. Um, and so what we try to do is to integrate faith and psychotherapy. And so we've started a family series, um, I would say about a month ago. And so we had um, talked about some building blocks to healthy families. And tonight we are starting on communication styles because it is really important for us to understand how we communicate, um, how we receive information, because that is so, so, so important because sometimes we are getting the information, but the way we're receiving the information is not connected. And that is creating a lot of issues within our relationships. And so relationships are the bedrock of life. We need relationships. We need our friends, our family. Um, God created relationship to help us connect with one another. And in our connection with others, we're able to better understand the, our relationship with God. You know, there's a scripture that says, how can you love um, God whom you don't see and, and, and just not the people? Hi, Julia. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, Juliana, sorry. <laughs> welcome. Um, and so how do you um, love, how are you going to show, pretend that you love God? And then the people that are sitting right here with you, your friends and your family, you act like they don't matter. And so communication is so important and God created relationships because relationships help us to connect to him in a much different level or in a deeper level. If you look at your relationship with your uh, relationship with your father, understanding what a father is in our relationship to God, when we have healthy earthly fathers and we understand that relationship. So when God presents himself to us and says, he's our father, we're not like, mm, I don't know. When we had unhealthy relationships with our fathers, it is harder for us to transition into God's concept of fatherhood. Or when we've had unhealthy relationships with our mothers or sibling issues. Um, we've done um, many months back when we talked about um sibling rivalries and dealing with sisters and conflicts. And we looked at the um, life of, um, um, what's her name? Oh God, the, um, Rebecca and, um, why well, I can't come up with it now. Um, help me out here. Rebecca and, um, what was the sister, the oldest sister? Leah, Rebecca and Leah. Um, Hi, Fabi. Welcome. Welcome from those of you guys who are streaming from Facebook, from, in, um, well, not Instagram, Facebook, um, Clubhouse, and also um, on YouTube. And if you like, um, and we have um, Eugene here, and if you want to come up and be a part of the conversation, because with um, um, Clubhouse, it's much easier to be part of the conversation. You could raise your hand, and I certainly will let you in to be part of that conversation. Um, and so, again, our relationship, the intimacy in our relation with a relationship with a husband and a wife um, allows us to experience a depth of intimacy in relationship with God. So relationships are very important. And what keeps relationships functioning um, is communication. It is so essential. If we're not properly communicating, we are missing so much. What the person came to bring to us, what they came to teach us, encourage us with, um, um, teach and train us. And so communication is so important. So the five communication styles, we're going to start with assertiveness. Now, assertiveness is um, the communication style you want to have. 
we don't all grow up with that. Sometimes through our trauma, through the pains and the things that we have gone through in our life, we develop very maladaptive behavior um, communication styles. And we learn not to um, communicate our feelings or a lot of us don't know how to properly communicate our feelings to one another or we, we communicate in anger, frustration and all kinds of things. So assertive communication style is the communication style you want to have because it's the most healthiest and the most effective style of communication. Um, so it allows you to be able to say what you need to say and have the confidence to say what you need to say without playing games, without manipulation, without any of these things. And so it is so freeing when you're in a relationship with someone and you feel comfortable to share. You feel comfortable to say what you need to say and don't feel like the person's going to take you out of context. They're going to turn things around or twist it around on you, but you can say it and they can receive it in the way you intend to give it and you, you intended to share it. That is important. And so characteristics of assertive communication style is being able to achieve your goal without hurting other person, other people. Sometimes in our communication, we're communicating not always great things. Sometimes we have to communicate correction. Sometimes we have to communicate what the person did to us that hurt us. And so being assertive, being comfortable in who you are. So assertiveness really starts with you, your own sense of comfortability within your own self. That is what's important with assertiveness. Um, you can only have assertive and be assertive, meaning that you're stating your point with confidence because you are confident in your own self. Your self-esteem is um, settled. You're settled in your self-esteem. You don't have like, I don't know how I feel about my, none of those things. You are comfortable. You can be direct. You can be honest. You can be open in love and not feel some kind of way and not feel you need to turn this here, twist the word here, fix it here so that the person can take it, can receive it, but you can give it to the person the way you want to give that to the person and be okay with how they receive it. So being protective, other characteristics is dealing with your protective, protective of own rights and respectful of others' rights. So respecting your own rights, respecting yourself, because when we don't share what we need to say, that's not showing respect to our own selves. We have to be able to respect ourselves and the way we respect ourselves is by saying what we need to say. Everybody's not always ready to receive it, but that's okay. If I need to say it, I just need to figure out what the most healthy way to say it and to and, and to say it and not to hold it inside. Holding it inside harms me. And not sharing what needs to be shared with the person harms them. Because here we are in a relationship. We both love each other. I have something that you, there's something that you did that has hurt me and I'm holding it on the inside and not sharing it with you. And so you know how sometimes when people have done you wrong and you frustrated or upset with someone, um, typically you they're talking and having conversation and, and you begin to judge everything they're doing. Um, you know, they're like, oh my goodness, the world is so wonderful. I'm having such a great day. And then in your head, you're like, mm -hmm. I'm glad you're having such a great day after you did what you did to me. And we go looking because we go back and forth like this in our mind. And so it is disrespectful when someone has done something to you that has hurt you, that you just that you decide to hold it inside and not share it with them. So it's disrespectful to you and it's disrespectful to the other person because they don't get to hear what they have done that hurt you so they could make the corrections. You know, um, people that are um, behaviorally um, have assertive, great assertive communication styles, they're more socially and emotionally expressive. They're, they can just talk and just because they're comfortable because that comfortability is based on self-esteem. And self-esteem, having a high self-esteem, um, it's not, so the thing with self-esteem, it's not a one and done situation. 
Self-esteem is a continual work in progress. Hi, Rose. Welcome, welcome to all those of you guys who are watching. Um, please share the live if I hadn't mentioned that um, and invite other people into the conversation or to hear. Um, and so when we are, um, so assertive communication style, we're socially, we're more um, expressive and the importance in um, being able to be more assertive is because of your self-esteem and self-esteem is not a one and done situation. It is a continual work in progress. The level of self-esteem that I have right now is not the same that I had two years ago or five years ago. My self-esteem have grown. S situations, circumstances have caused me to grow. And because um, I didn't take those situations and all of them were not wonderful situations, all of them were not like great, feeling great situations. A lot of those situations that came, they hit me hard. They hit me hard. Um, and I suffered a lot of loss. Hi, Sandy. Um, you're, you're terrible at communicating. <laughs> well, that's what we have this on to kind of learn the different styles. And so hopefully through the conversation, um, you'll be able to identify which communication style that you um, identify more with and how we can change that. So again, with self-esteem and assertive communication style, it is synonymous is connected to it. In order to have good assertive communication styles, you have to have good self-esteem. And, and that is really learning to appreciate and love yourself as you are right now. Uh, it's not, so it's not about loving every part of you and being comfortable and content with everything, sometimes that's not the case with us. But we are comfortable and content enough in who we are and value who we are and who we're becoming. Sometimes we get lost in, well, I haven't arrived to where I want to be yet. Well, none of us have arrived. All of us continue to be a work in progress. All of us are work in progress. Consequently, the Sandra that I want to become, the I'm the Sandra, this Sandra right now is the only Sandra that can take me to meet the Sandra that I want to become. So if I begin to discourage the Sandra, well, nitpick at everything um, this, this Sandra is doing and just like cut me down, talk negative about myself and discourage myself, how am I going to ever get the strength to become who I wanted to be, who I think I should be? So I have to build me up and accept me as I am right now. The Sandra that, that I am right now, the person that you are right now, that is the person you need to love, honor, and respect. Not the person you want to become, the one that you are right now. Because in loving the one you are right now, you enable the now you, you strengthen the now you to walk you to that, to the future you that you're looking to become. And so commun effective communication, assertive communication helps with that. Um, making your own choices and taking responsibility for them. And so being assertive is making choices. You make your own choice and you take responsibility for them. Every decision you make is not going to be awesome and perfect, and that's okay. Some choices you make, there will be some negative consequences that happen. And so you can't be like, oh my goodness, why did I do this? And how terrible, I'm so terrible, I'm so this, I'm so that. That is not helpful. What is helpful is that, okay, that is a decision that I made, and I have to own that decision. It did not turn out the way I wanted to turn out. That's okay. Let me analyze this thing and see what happened. Why did it not turn out the way I wanted to turn it out to turn out so that I know how next time to change that behavior? Okay. Um, so another character behavior characteristic of um, assertive communication style is that you're asking directly for needs to be met while accepting the possibility of rejection. So we struggle so bad, so deeply with rejection. We don't ever want people to reject us. You know, the funny thing, you know, I share with clients too, is like, 
okay, you don't like everybody. You don't accept everybody because you, some people you've looked at them and be like, "Mm -mm, I don't want to be friends with you. And yet that's okay. But we don't ever want people to be like, well, I don't want to be friends with you. So we can tell people no, and we can vet people and decide that they're not good enough for us. Yet we, it's so hard for us to receive that someone could not want us. And so we have to be, um, so one of the behavior mm-hmm. characteristics um, in um, assertive communication is being able to accept the possibility of rejection, accept that someone may not be interested in what it is you have to offer. Someone may not be interested in you. Someone may not may find you not a good fit for them. That doesn't mean something is wrong with you necessarily. You know, because someone doesn't like you, whether it's in a relationship, you you a broke a breakup or a divorce, or you know, you went out for a particular job and you didn't get the job. So assertiveness is saying, I'm going to share my my thoughts. I'm going to express my needs. I'm going to express my thoughts and feelings. And I understand that everyone will not receive it. And I'm not going to let the fact that people did not receive it or people... um, Hi, Judith. Welcome. Welcome. The fact that people did not receive it to now mean that something is wrong with me. So a part of uh, um, assertive communication, um, cause it's birth out of a good and healthy self-esteem. It's the fact that everybody won't like me. Everybody will not receive what I have to say, you know? And so I'm, and that's important for us to, um, understand another, um, so Another part of assertive communication and characteristics or behavioral characteristics is being able to accept compliments. So all the things that we have talked about, just being able to accept rejection, meaning the possibility of rejection, um, taking responsibility, being emotionally um, expressive, all of these thoughts and accepting compliments, you see in assertive communication, again, it begins to highlight the necessity and the importance of healthy self-esteem, healthy self-acceptance, healthy self-love. You have to love and value the you that you are right now. Not the you that you want to become tomorrow. The one that you are right now, that is the you that you have to accept. Accepting that you does not mean that you settle and you don't keep um, developing and you don't keep growing. It just simply means that you got to push forward. It simply means that you have to move forward. It simply means that you have to um, appreciate what's good with you, what's good about you, and then honor that. You know? your good characteristics, things that is great about you, honor that. And at the more you honor that, the more you develop a, a healthier self-esteem, the greater your ability to communicate more assertively becomes because the foundation for assertive communication is healthy self-esteem, healthy self-love, okay? Um <clears throat> Now looking at um, any questions so far um, on communication, on assertive communication? Okay, so when you are able to assertively communicate your feelings and your thoughts, you're able to have good volume and your pitch is normal and proper to express what you're trying to express, good posture, you're not like this, you're comfortable, you relax, you 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 know your your body, you know. You know, your body is relaxed as tall as you're not fidgeting. Um you're not gesturing around and just like kind of like all over the place. You have good eye contact, you know. You feel in control of your space. You're not all up in people's face and you have proper spacing because you're comfortable because you're the comfortability is what helps you express what you need to express. The confidence within yourself 
comes through your comfortability within yourself and your posture and your gesturing, your facial expression, even the tone in your voice. Um, and when you're presenting that way to people, it is much easier for them to take what you're saying more seriously, to receive what you're saying, to know where you stand, that people are not trying to manipulate their, their way through. You're trying to share your feelings or your opinions and, you know, and you're being confident in there. So that confidence um, closes the door for someone to try to come and manipulate into this thing. Um, it gives, again, shows respect for yourself and respect to the other person that you can communicate in a manner that is going to be helpful to them. Sorry. Okay. Again, communication styles. I'm assertive communication style. Any other question as we move to the next one? Questions, comments, thoughts? No? Okay. Um, so the second um, communication style is assertive. Um, sorry, um, aggressive style. Now this communication style really is dealing with winning. People just want their thought across. They want their feelings. They want to say what they want to say and how they want to say it. And you just need to receive what they're saying. And it is always at the expense of someone else. It is aggressive in nature. It feels threatening, you know. Um, it encroaches upon other people's rights. So the behavior characteristics um, for someone utilizing aggressive communication style, they're very frightening. They're very threatening. They're loud. They're hostile. It's like they're out to win. You, they're very abrasive and very demanding, and they can become very belligerent um, very explosive, um, intimidating, bullying, and just really taking over, taking over personal space, taking over just their voice um, is very threatening, is very um, condemning, is very demanding. It's like, I'm coming to take over, you know, that kind of um, aggressiveness. And when we're dealing with people that are communicating that way, what it does to the person who is receiving or hearing this, it shuts you down. It either makes you defensive or shuts you down. And so the um, assertive, uh, aggressive communication style, it is a, communica a very unhealthy communication style. It is almost the opposite of an assertive communication style because it is so overwhelming and it's so aggressive. It can be so aggressive and, and causes the listener to shy away and just shut down or cause the listener to get riled up and like, oh, you're not talking to me that way. And then get into, and it just become, it can become easily a uh, um a fighting match. So if you find yourself in your in your communication, in your relationships, that you're constantly, it's very combative. You're just always going and going and just attacking. That is unhealthy. That is unhealthy. That is an indication that something is completely wrong. Some that You're dealing with an issue on the inside that is impacting you in such a way that you are not able to to speak in love and respect to others. And that has to be corrected and that has to be changed. We can't function and operate that way because it causes our relationships to be unauthentic. Sometimes people with assertive communication styles, they'll say stuff like, well, you know what, that's how, you know, I'm honest, I'm, I'm you know, I'm not fake. I, I, I tell it like it is um, and I, no, no, no. You can tell it like it is in a way that's respectful, in a way that's loving, in a way that's building up. It doesn't have to be condemning. You guys remember um, um, Claire Huxable from the Huxables? Um, you know, Claire has had a way of communicating um, and just she would just let, she could tell you off in such a respectful, 
and loving way that you walk away. Sometimes you walk away like, did she just cuss me out? Did she just put me in my place? Because it was done in such a way that did not belittle you. That did not um, harm you, the person, the receiver. It didn't cause you to be defensive. It didn't cause you to be, um, you know, to shut down because it was done in love, you know, and we have to be able to communicate in love and aggressive styles of communication does not speak love, nor does it accomplish the things that we wanted to accomplish. Um, because it's not that we necessarily want to harm the people we love, that we want to, um, you know, harm the relationship, but that's just not a healthy way to communicate. It does not get your point across. It, um, you know, so people who are receiving it, they become, again, defensive, aggressive, they withdraw, they fight you, you know, they can become very uncooperative, unco very resentful, very revengeful, and the humiliation, the feeling degraded, hurt and afraid, the loss of respect, and the loss of respect for you, really. And so we have to be careful that in our relationships, we're not communicating in a way that's not getting our point across. That is not showing love to the people that we generally do love. And so a lot of times aggressive behavior styles, they stem from people who have been hurt. They've been broken. Somebody, a, a lot of it is trauma-based, can, can come out of trauma. They've gone through negative experiences um, where people use them, where people took advantage of them. And they're like, bump this. Nobody's taking advantage of me no more. And, you know, and they're ready to fight. And everything they say is so aggressive because they're looking to um, create a presence or a sense that you cannot violate me, you cannot use me. It is this protective self, self-protective mechanism that we do that is not helpful. Instead of um, really saying, no, 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 you can't abuse me to protect me, it puts a wall and it, yeah, it in a way you have, um, this protectiveness that when you're just all aggressive and whatever, people are not going to try you. People are not going to do some of these things, but you'll also miss the opportunity of love and to learn how to communicate um, healthier and not through your pain, not through your brokenness, not through your experiences or your trauma. And so um, there's just some things we just have to, life happens to us all. Um, we could, you know, sometimes it's just in our family, people just talk so loud in the family and they so can be so aggressive. Um, and that style of communication, sometimes it's in families, they're just so loud, you know. Um, you find some a lot of that sometimes in minority, com um, um, foreign, um, foreign, um, well, I can't think. Foreign born people. You know, you have K virgins who say, oh my goodness, they're so loud. They're just so angry and frustrated. Africans say the same thing. Haitians, I'm Haitian. S similar, you know, or um, you find um, in, um, in Italian households, they're just loud and, or it could be in so many different nationalities, you know, we can pick that up from um, our upbringing. So we have to be attentive to how we're communicating and how that is coming across. Because sometimes if it's just because everybody in the family is just loud and they just boisterous and just, you know, and people are like, oh, too much, too much, slow down, calm down, bring it down, bring it down. We need to be mindful of that and not keep this, well, that's just me. That's how I am. Okay, yeah, that's how that's how you have that's what you've developed in the course of your life. Is that beneficial to you? Well, that's how all my family are. Yeah, is it beneficial to you? So it's not 
so we, we, we got to go back and, and just be realistic. If you're going into corporate America and you are loud and just, I, I, how is that going to help you? Certain places, it just that just does not fit. And it becomes more of a harm than it helps. And so we got to be mindful. When we're looking at these um, behavior attributes in our lives, they don't fit in every circumstance. And in some circumstances, they harm more than they do any good. It's not true people have to receive everything you present. It's not true people have to just accept everything you give. They don't, nobody has to. Don't nobody owe you none of that. And so you're going to have to learn how to um, be mindful and change certain styles or certain behaviors that may not be bringing you the results that you're looking for, you know? So that is aggressive communication style. We've done um, assertive communication style. We've done aggressive communication style. So now passive aggressive. So this communication style is another issue that is another issue that people have. Hi, Eddie. Welcome, welcome. Um, and so with passive aggressive communication style, so the person appears very passive on the surface, but on the inside, they are directly acting out in anger. And it's kind of like, you know, how some people, um, how when you were young, um, people, um, your parents would tell you, you need, you need to do this and that or whatever. And on the inside, and you like your face, yeah, yeah, yeah. And on the inside, on the outside, you might be sitting, which is in your position. But on the inside, you up like, well, I, you, you know, you're doing this, that, and the other on the inside. So people with a um, passive aggressive communication style, they present very docile, very calm, very relaxed, very like, okay, 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 sure, sure. But on the inside, they could be boiling and just angry and, and, and arguing and fighting and, and just not being um, honest. They can be indirectly aggressive, very sarcastic, devious. They are um, tend to be unreliable, complaining. They're always um, patronizing, gossiping. And this big thing, to face it, very fun. So people with aggressive, passive aggressive communication style, they're very phony people. Very phony because they don't have yet enough sense of self um, confidence to speak their mind, to protect themselves. And so they present like they're accepting, they're comfortable, they're okay with what's happening when on the inside they're angry and they pissed. And these people can be very dangerous because of the phony and the fake element because they're smiling. <laughs> oh yeah, that's my best friend. Oh yeah, that's yeah, that's my girl. Yeah, that's my boy. And then really that's not so. They pretend like they're your they're your good friends, they're your cheerleader. But on the inside, they're angry for the way you um for what you have to say to them, for the way you've communicated with them, for the even in correcting them. And sometimes those people are even even if you were um, very assertive in your communication styles, very respectful, very loving. Some people, if their communication style is passive aggressive, they don't always know how to receive what you're saying, and can be very um, defensive and take um, what you say out of context. Um, they're not necessarily bipolar. <laughs> Um, because with bipolar, it's one minute the person is good and happy, and the next minute they're angry and they piss and stuff, and they're just in a different space. Whereas with someone with passive aggressive communication styles, they don't really let you see 
their anger and their frustration, it comes out in other ways. Because they don't have the courage yet, the courage to say, you know what, I don't like what you said to me. I don't like the way you connect, you 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 did what you did. So they just will smile and then plot. And so you can't ever tell, you know, if they come in to give you a pat on the back or a knife on the back, you know? And so people who are receiving this aggressive communication style, they can feel very confused and angry and hurt and resentful. Because, you know, you acted like you were good and you were fine. And then all of a sudden you turn around and did this thing out of the blue. Like we're two-faced. There you go. They two-face it. And the two-facedness is not, and, and I have to say that with the people with a passive aggressive communication style, the two-facedness is not because they are naturally phony. It is because they don't know how to verbalize what they feel. A lot of times these people have been hurt, have been abused, have been taken advantage of, and, and don't feel like they have a voice. Or when they had spoken up in the past, they were punished, they were criticized, they were cut down. And so instead of going through all that, they're just going to be like, yep, I agree. And don't. You know? So that is um, someone, what's the difference between two-faced and hypocrite? <laughs> Well, two faces is Haitian, is American, and um, hypocrite is Haitian. <laughs> I mean, they share similarities. Um, it, I think it's essentially the that hypocrite is just um, kind of similar, the same wording that you would use for someone that's two faced in Haitian Creole. Um, you know, and so, <laughs> but there are people, so in passive aggressive, not everyone is just two-faced naturally because they just a two-faced person or they able to, um, sometimes it's because they don't have, um, <laughs> the ability to say, Hey, you hurt me or, Hey, I don't like this because many times in the past they were, um, shut down and cut down and they were they didn't feel safe they didn't feel safe to share what they needed to share they didn't feel they had a voice and so a lot of times those people who didn't feel like they have a voice they grew up and become very hypocrite because they don't have a voice and they're not going to fight to get a voice necessarily um and so they're just gonna pretend that they agree and then turn around and talk about you and haitians are good for that oh my god jesus <laughs> Haitians, Africans, uh, we're just, we specialize, but all nations, all people, um, you know, I can say Haitian because I'm Haitian. And so I'm around more Haitians and I can see the hypo hypocrisy, like they just on another level sometimes. Um, people don't know how to say what they need to say, you know? Um, and then there's people that's generally hypocrite. They really know what to say to you. They're not, they just, they, they're, it's a cowardness. The cowardness is not because they're necessarily um, afraid, but they kind of enjoy cynicism. Um, and they like to be in the background and causing, causing trouble and creating stuff because they want to, um, they may not like you. It could be jealousy um, or whatever issue that, that is for the, that that's that they going on. They may see you doing something that they're not doing, or how did you get this far and they didn't get. So it could be so many different issues that they're dealing with that you have something that they don't have, and who and you ain't or they don't think you worth you, you better than them. And how did you get this? And when they didn't get it, so there's a lot of jealousy type subtypes in this um, when you're dealing with some a two faced person. Um, that they're in a way that they become very coward 
in the way that they operate and function. And some people are just very, um, they just like that, you know? Um, so submissive communication style. So the next one, submission, submissive um, communication style is really dealing, so you're dealing with your people pleasers. So these types of people, they don't, they can't handle conflict whatsoever. It's Sandra Grasso time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so they can't handle um, conflict. They avoid conflict. Um, and they're just like, whatever. They behave like other people's needs are more important than theirs. Um, they don't feel like they have much to contribute. These people are very apologetic, apologetic rather. Um, and so they're, they avoid, they avoid confrontation. They, um, you know, find it difficult to take um, responsibility or decision for their decisions or their actions. They're always yielding to someone else's preference. You know, oh, you know what? Whatever you want to do, it's okay. I'm fine with, with, they just, whatever you want to do. So a difference between in um, passive aggressive and a submissive um, both will be like, sure, they both will be in agreement with you. The passive aggressive person, they didn't want to be in agreement with you. And they're, and they acquiesced and they angry that they did that. They angry that they didn't sit up for themselves. They angry. Um, and then they, um, conniving and can be very conniving and trying to find a way. So they couldn't verbally stand up and say what they needed to say. So they, they stand up on a different way, which can be conniving, which can be hypocritical and two-faced. The submissive person, they just, whatever you want to do. These people feel so weak within themselves, so powerless, so unworthy that they just really lay down and let people walk right over them. And they just let people walk over them. And they don't say anything. They're not going to be a, trying to sideline, trying to find a way to, to take you out um, and stick a knife in your back. They're just going to just lay down. And so um, people with submissive communication styles um, have extremely low self-esteem. They don't feel they have a voice. They don't feel they have any power. They don't feel that they're worth much, that their thought or their opinion actually matters. And so they just let the person who's with... So the one of the dangerous... Um, and so why these are important. So we're talking about communication styles. They're important because we need to be able to know how to communicate in relationship. But when we understand what our communication style is, it is super helpful because it helps us to be mindful of some of the people we might get into relationships with. So for example, and a person who is a submissive, um, has a submissive communication style. No, that's not just men. I'm just women. Men can be that way too. So the person with, communi with a submissive communication style, it is so dangerous for that person to get with a aggressive communicator style. That the person who's aggressive will just eat them alive. Just eat them alive. And a person with passive aggressive communication style connecting with someone with submissive communication style will also eat them alive because they will pretend that they agree with stuff and cut you and and cut you and, and 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 turn on you, and the person with the submissive just becomes much more submissive, and they just close in more. And the trust is not there, because they can't trust you. You know, and so that's why it's important. You'll find people um, when you're dating and you're trying to talk to people. When you have time, I want you to tell me 
about a toxic person. Um, all of these people um, outside of the um, assertive communication style, you have toxicness in all of these other in all of these other communication styles. And so they are they show up in different ways. Um, an aggressive communication style with their toxic because they take over everything. They're very frightening, very loud, very demanding, very abrasive. They're just belligerent and they just like it, they're just taking over stuff. That's toxic because they're not expressing kindness, they're not expressing love. This is just about them. Someone with this passive aggressive a communication style is still toxic. Because they're agreeing and saying yes, but then on the but on the inside they're plotting. That's toxic and that's dangerous. Because at least with the aggressive person, you know what they all they coming with. You know all the ammunition and all the guns and they come in with. But with the um, person with um, the sorry with the person with the um, passive aggressive. You don't know what they coming with. So that's the person that will just laugh and smile and then you get your water and then you drink your water. And next thing you just like choking out because they don't put some poison in it. Um, and, and so that's dangerous and that's toxic. The person with the submissive, uh, the toxicity is within them because they feel so unworthy is a toxic person aggressive um no not always um it can they can be um aggressive or not um because the person with the passive aggressive you won't ever see them being aggressive but they can take you out really quickly <laughs> when you're not watching so that's toxic um and so thank you <laughs> Um, what else? Oh, we we're in, um, submissive. Okay. So these people, um, they get more frustrated and feel more guilty. Um, when, when you're on kind of listening or dealing with people that is very submissive, you get very frustrated and very guilty because they just acquiesce to everything, whatever you say. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. No problem. I'm, I'm with you. I'm this, I'm that. And they just, whatever you want. And so it can feel very frustrating because you can never really know what the person's opinion really is or how they really feel because they just say they're, they're the yes man. Yes, man. Yes to everything. Because they themselves have given up. Okay. Um, you are a stuck and interesting person. You are a suck and interesting person. I don't know what the suck part was, um, <laughs> but I am a very interesting person. <laughs> um, and so, so that's submissive. Um, such, okay. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, and so your manipulative, so the next communication style is manipulative. So this person is very scheming, very calculating, very shrewd. They're very manipulative communicators. Um, they try to, very skilled at influencing and controlling other people for their own advantage. And so, so they are always speaking words that hide their underlying message, their underlying theme. They're very cunning. They're very controlling of other people. Um, you know, they make others feel obliged or feel sorry for them. And they can be very like, oh my goodness, woe is me. My life is so terrible. You know, I went through all this stuff in my life. And they're always telling you some sad story to break your heart, to draw you, to make, to draw you, to do what they want you to do. So, um, and that's, and that's very toxic, extremely toxic when you're dealing with manipulative style people, because 
They just all about self. And they will use whatever means. So like an example would be um, in their language. Um, it could be. So, um, sorry. So you can have someone like, they could be like, well, you know, I don't have any time to buy anything. So I wear this, so I just had to wear this dress. I hope I don't look too awful in it. Or I hope I don't look terrible. So people manipulative looking for attention, looking for compliment, you know, or, you know, you're so lucky to have um, these um, pair of shoes. I wish I had, I wish I had those shoes. I can afford those kind of stuff. To make you feel bad, oh, you know, I went through such a hard life. You know, my childhood wasn't this, my parent wasn't that, my mom, my this, my that, and you know, I didn't have this, I didn't have that, all to make you feel terrible for them, and all of a sudden you're like you, to become their rescue, to become their savior, and they're not looking for savior; they're just looking for, to get what they want. That is a very toxic person because they will present that they are. Um, they're in really in true relationship with you. They're not. They're out for self. Sometimes those people too have gone through a lot of trauma. And in their trauma, um, they have learned, um, okay, someone came and took advantage of me. Someone exploited me. And instead of me just getting angry and just getting all depressed and all sad about it, I need to find a way to capitalize off of that. Oh yeah, well I'm gonna um, well I'm gonna take advantage of someone else, and I'm going to exert that influence and that power that I lost, and take it from someone else. They're selfish, and they're about self, and so again, very toxic. So that is important. You know, a person with um, a manipulative um, communication style does not, oh my goodness, so destructive with a submissive type because they will just get everything out of that submissive type. You know, um, or someone who's passive aggressive take advantage. They won't, you know, when they connect with someone with an assertive communication style, that person is on their game. You may have talked, tell me your sad story once and got something out of me, but you're not going to keep getting stuff out of me. Um, I would say, um, with toxic, I don't know. With you're you're dealing with um, someone that um, something that someone that is unhealthy, um, or the relationship that is unhealthy, that is broken, that is um, hurtful, intentionally hurtful. Um, That's what you'd be dealing with when you're dealing with someone um, that is toxic. Um, yeah, so you have aggressive, passive, passive aggressive, um, manipulative, and um, submissive. So these are the five um, communication styles that we're going to talk about tonight. And again, it's important for you to know what communication style. So what communication style would you say you are, um, Eddie? Or how about you, Sandy? What communication style would you say you are? Are you... Ag um, aggressive, assertive, passive aggressive, um, submissive, and um, manipulative. You're in the middle. <laughs> what is the middle? 
50-50 on which one? <laughs> Fifty fifty between what? And it's okay if you don't want to share specifically which one, as long as you recognize it, which one it is. So then you can um, you know, work on that yourself. So the 50 that you the good 50, <laughs> um the good part of the 50 that you are, whatever, if it's more assertive, great. And in the areas, so the thing is, and even that's a good point that you brought with this 50-50, because the reality is that with some people, we can have some relationships where we are very assertive and we tell people what we feel, how we feel in a way that's respectful. We're not holding it back. We're not hiding. We're not pretending. And we're able to probably communicate our feelings just fine. And we get in other relationships where we become very submissive. So a good example, at your job, you could be very assertive. No, I'm not doing that. No, I'm not going there. Thank you very much. Have a great day. And you, because you're able to just come out there and just tell people what you want, what you don't want, what you don't need, and, and not feel bad and feel sad about it because a Sally didn't like it. You didn't want to go out with, um, with the team um, to the bar and whatever. So no, I'm sorry. I'm not going to, um, no, no, thank you. And you can assert, be very assertive and let them know. Then you can get in a romantic relationship. You might be in a romantic relationship and becomes very assertive. I'm a very um, aggressive in that relationship. Sometimes parents get very aggressive with their children in communication styles, but in their with their husband, they get very submissive or with their relationship, very submissive or with parents. Like, you know how to talk to people, let people know. But as soon as you get around your mom or your dad, you don't know what to say no more. you passive aggressive all of a sudden. So there's that in relationships where we can be in one way, in one relationship, and then turn around and feel completely different way or the opposite in another relationship. And how I was very assertive here and I get in maybe sometimes more intimate relationships and I lose all of that assertiveness and all of a sudden, or I can get very manipulative. Maybe you've gone through unhealthy relationships in the past and you prop and you found this person that's like a good person, like, oh my goodness, where have you been all my life? And then we can become very manipulative to keep them with us. you know? So yeah. So the five communication styles, aggressive, passive, aggressive, uh, manipulative, submissive, and assertive. Those are important for us to know which one we are and to also understand that sometimes in different settings, we who could have been very assertive in one setting can turn around and become manipulative in another one can become very passive aggressive in another one, can become very um, submissive, can be very aggressive in different relationships. And these deal with power di differentials. So where do we feel we are powered? Empowered or feel we have a voice? You know, with your parents, you know, a lot of teenagers are passive aggressive with their parents because they don't really have too much of a voice, too much of an opinion sometimes because not every, um, you know, if you were got in my <laughs> upbringing in a Haitian household, you don't have a whole lot to say. So you were passive aggressive, very passive aggressive or submissive and just like, sure, whatever you say, because you don't want to be in trouble. You didn't want to get into arguments. You didn't want to fight. You didn't want none of those things. Uh, but you get with your friends or you get with other places and especially where people are in more intimate relationships that they are either having to be passive aggressive or they are um, more submissive, they will turn around and go in other relationships. Oh, hi, Radiant. My my battle buddy, how you doing? So um, they can get in, those in another relationship 
and just all of a sudden begin to get very um, um, manipulative or very aggressive because in one relationship, they lost power and they don't feel that um, they don't feel powerful. They don't feel they have a voice. They don't feel none of those things. And so they get in a relationship where they feel like, okay, I have a little bit more power and therefore um, can turn around and abuse that power in that relationship. And so we want to be mindful. Um, we can have good, again, we can have, um, be an assertive communicator in one setting and then turn around in another setting and be very manipulative or very aggressive. And so we got to be mindful of our relationships and look at our relationships and say, okay, how am I to my children? What communication styles do I have towards my children? Am I very aggressive? Am I very manipulative trying to get my kids to do what I need them to do? And so I manipulate them, you know, or with my mate, with my spouse, am I very manipulative? Am I aggressive? Or am I, you know, how is my communication style with my, my, um, my spouse, with my children, with my friends, you know, with work? Those are important for us to understand how we communicate in these settings because those are some total of who we are. And so, um, you know, very important for us to do that. Very important when you're dating people, when you know predominantly what your um, communication style is, if you're um, someone that's still struggling and you're very submissive, stay away from aggressive people. Stay away from aggressive people because those can end up leading into um, domestic violence. So a lot of times we find, you know, and when when I get a chance to work with women that's gone through different type of domestic violence or certain exploitation, um, when you start to look at their communication styles, because communication is key. What your how you feel your comfortability in speaking. And expressing your thoughts, expressing your feelings is super important because then that dictates the kind of people that draws to you. And so sometimes people are in, when you evaluate, a lot of times evaluating some of the, some of the women that has gone and been in um, domestic violence situations, their personality type can be quite submissive or very passive aggressive. Um, and they connect with a lot of aggressive and manipulative communication styling men. And you can have someone who's very assertive because even with domestic violence, domestic violence, it happens because you are groomed to it. Nobody just walk up to you and slap you in the face and all of a sudden <laughs> you, you slap back. But when, for you not to slap back, it's a grooming process that takes a while um, to be groomed. So you could have been very assertive, very strong, very had great self-esteem, and then you start to connect yourself with someone who um, is very manipulative. Or it might be because there, you, while you're confident and you have good self-esteem, but you might have a need or loneliness, a loneliness in your life. Yeah, I love myself. I'm doing great. My life is great in that sense. But that one piece, I don't have a husband. I don't have a, a boyfriend. I don't have a, a girlfriend or whatever that, that desire for a relationship can cause you to sh shift and be attracted to someone and we allow a person that's manipulative, aggressive to come into your life. And you shift because of the loneliness that you have, that need that you have. So I hope you guys were blessed. Hey, Shirley, how you doing? You, you uh, okay, on um, Clubhouse. You wanna come up on Clubhouse, Shirley? Invite right to speak. Um, okay, so any questions? Hey, how you doing? I'm very good. Very good. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. You are Great con conversation. Oh, good. 
Um, you are coming to the end tonight. We were talking about um, um, communication styles because it's super important for you to know your communication style, whether it's aggressive, um, manipulative, passive aggressive, um, what other two? Assertive, um, aggressive, passive aggressive, submissive, or manipulative. And to also understand that in different settings with different relationships, we can take on different person um, communication styles. You may have a relationship um, where you're very submissive. Um, in your intimate relationship um, with your kids, you might be very aggressive. With your parents, you might be very passive aggressive because they don't give you an opinion. Um, you know, at your work, you might be able to be assertive or at work settings, you might be very submissive or very passive aggressive. You know, so these shift um, sometimes based on um, where we are. Um, and so we have to be mindful of that so that we can get ourselves into having, developing assertive communication styles, being able to be confident in who we are and what we need, what we need to say, and to say in a way that's respectful and loving, but how people receive it is up to them. It's no longer your responsibility. Your responsibility is to express it in a way that's loving, respectful, and that is honest. And what they got and what they how they receive it is on them, not on you no more. You know? Okay. I have a follow-up question. Okay. Um, assertiveness, right, seems to be the goal. Mm -hmm. Um, can you can you okay, so assertiveness seems to be the goal, but assertiveness also seems like it's the person who's in authority. It's kind of like you say what you need to say, you mean what you say, and kind of like I made my point, that's the end of discussion. But is it can assertiveness come in a spectrum as well? Like I'm assertive, but I'm still kind. Like I'm assertive and I still mean business. I'm assertive and I don't want to hear your opinion. I I just think like I, I don't know. It seems like being assertive is like an umbrella, but you can have different types of assertiveness. Is that true? So um, it's not like a one and done kind of situation and you just assertive and that's just how it is. It is a process of developing. So a person with assertive communication styles have great self-esteem or high self-esteem. Developing high self-esteem um, is not an automatic thing. It is a continual process of developing. And so you may be um, in your assertiveness, you may be at a, what, 50% of your conversations and what you need to share, you're assertive. And again, you have that where in different relationships that shifts, that can shift. The goal is to, in your in all of your relationships, to be able to communicate in one particular style. And the goal is assertive. And so it may take you, like if you felt like you didn't have a voice, let's say with your mother, it may take you years to develop more assertiveness in that relationship with your mother, if ever, sometimes. But if the relationship with you and your mother is um, a predominant relationship in your life, you have a lot of work to do so that it does not remain um, very submissive or passive aggressive. So yes, there is a spectrum, but it is this development that you're doing. Um, does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Okay. I won't even charge you for that question. No. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Hmm? I so you're so gracious. Yeah, I try, I try. Um, <laughs> any other questions, comments, thoughts um, you guys have? So, um, yep, so that with the, um, hold on, let me see one more thing. Um, yeah. So those are the five ones that we're going to go over. And next week, so as we continue our conversation, because we've done the building blocks to healthy families. Um, we did that the last couple of sessions. Um, and then so tonight we want I wanted to go back and, and do the communication piece because that is important. And we had alluded a lot to that 
before and I want to make sure we did the communication part. And so um, I believe um, next week we're going to go into um, relationships, um, romantic relationships rather. We've been talking about relationships, but we're going to move into romantic relationships because that is a big, big deal. And in our romantic relationships, um, we're going to talk about from starting to where to engagement, to marriage, and all this wonderful stuff, and some of the things that you want to take a look at. And so for the next couple of weeks, so as you guys do know, I am going to Africa on a missions trip, missionary trip, which I'm super, super excited. I'm leaving August 4th. So that puts us at, let's see, today is the, what is today? The 19th. So we have the 26th and we have the 2nd. And so while I'm away, um, I might be able to come to check in. So I don't know with reception, internet and stuff like that, um, but we may have to have a pause in the conversation or if it's possible, I'll still try to come on the Monday night, the 9th and the 16th to see, to have a conversation um, or even just check in with you guys. But we have two more weeks to start into the romantic relationship piece and begin to understand maybe some relationship etiquettes. Because sometimes we get into relationships and it's like ridiculous. Um, we do things that's like way left field um, and not no proper relationship etiquettes. Like when you go out to dinner, if you're going to a nice fancy dinner, you know, there's a whole table settings, there's a whole set of etiquette that you follow that is helpful um, to represent to people that you do, you cultured, you, you, you know, you sophisticated, you know, a thing or two. Um, and in relationships too, a lot of times we have not been taught about healthy relationships or how to have healthy relationships. And so we're going to go through some of that, um, and talk about, hi, Sheba, welcome for, welcome. Um, we're going to go into next week, um, some relationship etiquettes, things that are important for you to do, um, at the beginning of a relationship, through a relationship, um, the dating phase and all this other stuff, we're going to get into some conversation about that. And then eventually, maybe when I get back from my mission trip to Africa, we're going to go more into some premarital stuff and then also into marital stuff. And then we're going to um, end with um, parenting. Okay. So if you guys have no further questions, I appreciate your coming. Uh, if you guys enjoy what I do here, which I hope you do because I do try to bring you some really good information. Certainly, um, you know, and you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can. Let me give you some information about that right now. Life with Sandra. I am so well done. Yes, that would be great. Awesome. Welcome to Coaching Life with Sandra. I am Sandra Garcon Dijerville. You know, for the last 25 years, I have been a social worker, a licensed therapist, a multi-business owner, ministry, and community leader. Well, I bring all of these experiences into this unique and exclusive coaching program called Coaching Life with Sandra. Coaching Life with Sandra offers three unique tracks for the individual, the business leader, and the ministry leader to help you skill in your industries and create a healthy life balance. Call me today, Coaching Life with Sandra, 508-580-3800, or visit us online at www.sandragarçondejaville.com. The full emergence of an individual is not accidental, nor does it happen without strategic guidance. They say when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Well, in this case, Coach Sandra is here. Let's get started. So um, if you guys would like to work with me personally, I'm not offering counseling right now. I'm taking a break from the counseling, but I'm providing some life coaching. Um, so coaching can be less intense than counseling. Um, we don't have all that clinical piece attached to it. And so um, go online, get the information. I would love to work with you. I do have a few spots open, so let me know. Um, and if you have any other questions, you know, I'll take your questions. I thank you so much for watching, for those who came on, for Eddie. Appreciate your encouragement. 
every night. Um, Eddie says, as Monday night goes, so goes Sandra Garcon. <laughs> so I'm excited. Thank you so much um, for those who came on. We do stream from um, Facebook, my personal Facebook, the ministry's Facebook. Um, what is this one? Um, YouTube and also on Clubhouse. So there's a lot of different ways for you guys to connect. And um, once I can get another phone number, we could probably connect to, um, <laughs> um, what do you call it? Um, shucks. What's that thing? What is that thing called? Instagram. There you go. <laughs> All right. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful week. Oh, we went really long today. Sorry about that. Um, have a wonderful week. I'll see you guys next week as we start on the romantic relationship piece. All right. God bless.